The murder of George Floyd hit us all. It hit us really, really hard. Anti-blackness is global because anti-blackness is part of French history, it's part of German history, it's part of, of English history. When you are black, people will constantly ask you, where are you from? This has been happening for years and to finally be able to speak up about it and feel like I'm doing something to help, you know, it means a lot. Black lives have always mattered. We have always been important. And now is the time. That the <laughs> I was in my bedroom and someone sent me the video of George Floyd and I watched it and I literally cried my eyes out as if it was someone that I knew. It actually brought tears to my eyes. There was blacks, there was whites, there was Hispanic, there was there was people of all colours, races, shades, everything, and everyone believed in the cause. Everyone wanted change. England is not an overtly racist country, in my humble opinion. It is a covertly racist country, so we are much more subtle and polite with our racism. A lot of US, people who lived in the US, um, black people especially, were saying stuff like, well, in the UK, you're lucky you don't have to deal with this. And it's like, we do. We have exactly the same, we, we deal with this as well. There's also this French tendency to believe that racism is an American problem, <laughs> you know, or an American invention. In the United States, you have what I would call the origin story. Except the Native Americans, everybody came from somewhere. Some voluntarily, some other involuntarily, they were kidnapped. You have a certain kind of narrative and slavery had happened on the mainland. France, it's different. Everything took place outside of the European continent. So you have this divide. The difference is that French people tend to ignore this history because their slave colonies are far away, <laughs> because they are overseas. There is this refusal to take into account the history of slavery and colonization and how race was part of it and how we're still dealing with that legacy. So BLM provides a grammar of race and racism and liberation that challenges uh, the erasure and the silencing of systemic racism in France. New Zealand is probably one of the most difficult places to be black in this world. Imagine you are black, but you're not allowed to be black. That's literally how it is over there. We as black people or as African people here are a super minority. We tend not to have the advocacy that other groups who have been here long and who have bigger communities have. We're constantly told, like, we're not like the USA. This is, you know, not like what's happening in America. At least America is able to name the elephant in the room, be able to address it. Um, it's, it's worse when you're still living in complete denial. We addressed um, the Prime Minister directly and, and the government and we said uh, we're not going to stand for this um, and we oppose this because we don't want to end up um, like the United States. La muerte de George Floyd sirvió 
de resistencia y de visibilización de la magnitud y la brutalidad de la violencia en contra de los negros y negras. A nivel mundial, a raíz de lo que pasó con él allá, esto reactivó nuevamente en la población y los movimientos negros de Colombia. Nos está lastimando con su gas, con sus tasers. Somos humanos como ellos, ellos tienen familia, nosotros también. Respétenos la vida, respétenos la vida, somos Colombia. He was murdered by the police in the street. People was filming it and the, the police uh, begin to give him like electric shocks with a taser. So all the people around them, the police and, and Javier Ordoñez was saying the, the same things that happened with George Floyd, like, please no more, please stop. But they, they killed him. We have, yes, like an structural uh, racial discrimination. And I think that George Floyd was uh, an open to our eyes. Que este movimiento que se levantó en defensa eh, de lo ocurrido por Dios es importante porque esto nos ha permitido resistir, articularnos, visibilizar la realidad que tienen en, los, en todos los países. Toca eh, seguir fortaleciendo, seguir marchando, seguir exigiendo nuestros derechos, obvio, pacíficamente como lo hemos venido haciendo, defendiendo la vida y la igualdad de derechos para que nuestros hijos y nuestras hijas el día de mañana tengan esa libertad. I've been living and doing the work of the police killing black people for the last couple of years since Mike Brown, Trayon Martin, Sandra Bland. So therefore, um, George Floyd, um, I was excited that more people got involved. was uh, a moment in time where we saw uh, the use of force against First Amendment protesters, despite the fact that, you know, that, that is our, our, our God-given right, right, to peaceably assemble in a protest. I'm marching for George for Brianna, for Ahmad, for Jacob, for Pamela Turner, for Michael Brown, Trayvon. I truly believe it's gonna be our younger generation that liberates the people.